Today's sales leaders face a difficult task, selling the right products at the right time through the right channels. A new three-day program from Harvard Business School Executive Education addresses this problem directly. Join us on the Boston campus in August for Managing Sales Teams and Distribution Channels, where you will discover strategies that can lead to the best sales performance. Learn more by clicking the banner or visiting hbs.me slash sales. That's hbs.me slash sales. Blog Talk Radio. Crown Talk Time with Burgundy. I'm your host, Burgundy Mallory. We have the question of the week. Do you think it's fair for an international, national, or world title holder to hold multiple international, national, or world titles at the exact same time? We would love to hear your thoughts or questions on the Facebook, Instagram, or our Twitter account. Congratulations to all the ladies that got an opportunity to walk for the designers in New York Fashion Week. I know from my personal experience, I had a phenomenal time being able to walk for many designers, explore New York City lives, but other than that, and other than walking for these amazing designers and clothing, I got the opportunity to be on the Wendy Williams Show with my mother, my father, and my best friend, Courtney, and share my opinion on the hot topics on live TV. So it was really fun, and I had an amazing time. We would not be nothing without our amazing sponsors for the radio talk shows, magazines, and cover girls. So I'd like to give two of our sponsors a huge thank you, Blog Talk Radio, Radio Made Just For You, and Spreaker, which is very new to us. Um, they listen to the world's trendiest podcast. So thank you so much for all your quintessential sponsorships. Do you want an opportunity at a national title? Please visit the following system titles available. Miss Universe V Volunteer International, and that's U-N-I-V-E-R-Z-V. www.missuniverseV.wixsite.com slash universe V. USA National Miss, www.usanationalmiss.com. Miss the United States. You have the Ms., Mrs., Ms., Ms. Woman, Little Miss, and Preteen. You can visit them at MissUnitedStatesPageant.com. And last but not least, Pure International, PureInternational.com. Are you looking for a state or regional title, title holder or contestant to compete at your national? Please contact Crown Talk with Burgundy at gmail.com to spread the word about your system. And now, introducing the super mom super title holder, and phenomenal wife, Mrs. Racine, County, United States, 2018, Michelle Weisheim. Hello, Michelle. Well, hello there. How are you? I am doing wonderful. How are you doing this early evening? I am absolutely excellent. It is not snowing in Wisconsin, so that makes me very happy. (laughs) That's a good thing. It's 78 degrees where I'm at. Oh, I'm jealous. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, could you please tell our audience a little bit about who Michelle is underneath the crown and the sash? I sure can. Um, my name is Michelle Weisheim, and I'm currently Mrs. Racine County, United States, 2018. And my husband and I have been married for 12 years. We were married at the young age of 22. We have three beautiful, energetic, and very involved little girls, Bridget, Cheyenne, and Charlotte. Um, we are always on the go, whether that be drag racing, working on cars, um, doing volunteering, ice fishing, swimming. We are always outside and on the go. Oh, wow. You sound like a very busy family. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a good thing. Well, we have a lot of questions from our email, so we're going to go on and jump right into those. All right. Okay. So from San Diego, California, they've asked, 
how do you manage holding a title, traveling to Kenya, Africa, being a wife, and keeping your kids involved with their school and activity? And do you have any advice for a married woman and mother wanting to compete in the Mrs. United States pageant? You know, there's a lot of days that I'm not sure how I get through it, um, but I really rely on communication with Bob. It's so important. Every Sunday we sit down as a family and have a dinner together and it's, okay, what do you want to accomplish this week? And we involve the children um, as well in that conversation. Um, Unfortunately, I have never been able to go to Kenya, Africa. I'm able to help here um, in doing silent auctions and helping my organization that way. Um, And as far as the kids go, the kids really show a passion and a drive to want to help others. So it makes volunteering really easy. You know, our oldest is always coming home with a new idea of how we can raise money or who we can help. Um, And the two younger ones follow along with that. So with their involvement, it really makes things much easier and smoother for us to make the impact that we do. Oh, wow. I think it's exceptional that your family involves the children with all the activities that you are doing with your title and then as you and your husband do as a team. So I think that's wonderful that you do everything as a family and you let the children kind of come in and give their ideas and what they think and their thoughts. So that's really exceptional how you do that. Thank you. And also the the, the other question was, do you have any advice for a married woman and mother wanting to compete in the Mrs. United States pageant? If they have any thought about doing it, don't second guess yourself. Do it. Absolutely do it. It really is an eye opening experience um, as far as self evaluation and seeing, you know, how much you do as a mom and a wife and a citizen. And the best advice that I would give somebody um, would be be yourself. Be true to yourself and be who you are. Don't mm-hmm. form into anyone else. Just be true to you. I recognize what you're saying. Be true to yourself and be who you are as your individual self. It's all about making yourself really grow as who, whatever your name is and whoever you are and what you want to be. So if you want to join the Mrs. United States pageant, you can go to the MissUnitedStatesPageant.com and you can contact the national director. I know if you go on their website, you can go under title holders and go under Mrs. United States 2017 Lauren Zinkler and that they will have interested in competing, and you can go to find your state, and then you can see if you can get an appointed title or if they actually have a pageant for you to compete in, and you can get your local title and then head to the state. And hopefully if you win your state, then you can go on to nationals, which is a phenomenal experience. Our next question comes from Scottsdale, Arizona. They've asked, who has impacted your life in the last few years? That would be my grandmother. Um, My grandmother and I were very close, and we recently are coming up on her one-year anniversary of when she passed away. She was the type of woman that was never too busy to help someone else. She also, a very funny story, when her and my grandpa went to prom together, they had buttons in their underwear, not elastic, and her (laughs) button broke when she was walking up the stairs, and her underwear fell off. And I remember her telling me this story going, grandma that's horrible and she goes no it's not she goes it's no different in life you have to keep going you have to keep going in life no matter what obstacles whether it be underwear or a broken shoe you got to keep going for your dreams and your goals so she truly between her and my mom have been the most influential influence the most impacting people in my life (laughs) (laughs) well I can definitely see where you have a lot of her spirit in you. You are influential just like her. You think like her, and you have a positive outlook on life, just like your grandmother and, of course, as your mother. Yes, absolutely. Well, our next question comes from Bowling Green, Kentucky. They've asked, you have volunteered in over 30 cities in Wisconsin, traveled over 4,500 miles, has over 50 appearances, and 200-plus service hours. Wow, I'm just saying, that was a lot to say. That is amazing. (laughs) What appearance has been most remarkable in your books, other than building four schools in Kenya, Africa? You know, it's really kind of amazing to hear hear the service that I've done in the last year. 
Um, I, my family and I have been so blessed to do multiple appearances, as you know. Um, one of the, the most unique appearances that I was able to do was right in my little home country town of Waterford, and I got to do a special needs prom. And we, me and my husband were able to get all dressed up and be able to provide a prom and a really fun environment for those that typically wouldn't be able to have a prom. And there's one other one that is tied. Um, we did one that was called Rock for Bet. And that was a really unique um, appearance that it got all kinds of motorcycle people and veterans together. And they were so warm and welcoming. And we learned about people that were building little houses for veterans. And I think it's so important that we appreciate those that have served. So those are the two that are pretty top on my list. Well, I'm going to kind of fall back on the prom that you and your husband created. I think it's very superb that you created a a prom, and it's very imperative that you gave back to people that did not have a prom of their own. So they actually got to go back and get that special moment in time that they probably would have never had if you wouldn't have come up with that wonderful idea. Right. And, you know, the energy the energy in that room was just phenomenal. With the three kids, we think we're tired at night. But let me tell you, Bob and I were exhausted. It was it was an amazing event. I I can tell. I'm Oh, man, I wish I could have went. <laughs> <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, remember that you can still send an email to Crown Talk with Burgundy at gmail.com or call into the show at 646-668. 8147. We still have Michelle Wiseheim, your reigning Miss Racing County, United States, on the line. Thank you, McFormistell University, for being one of our quintessential sponsors. You can get your honorary degree today, and actually, you can join them in Orlando, Florida on June 21st, 2018, for their graduation. You never know, you may get your honorary degree there in June. Well, since we still have Ms. Michelle on line, we still have a lot more questions to get through from our emails. But this one actually comes from me. What are your thoughts on the question of the show um, of the show for today? I said it earlier, so listeners, if you did not get a chance to hear the question, I'm going to go back and read it. We've asked, do you think it's fair for an international, national, or world title holder to hold multiple international, national, or world titles at the same time? So, Michelle, you can answer that one first. Well, you know, I think the year of service is really dedicated for a year. And I think that, you know, we need to make sure that we're giving opportunities to other women to make impact on other people. And, um, you know, just because your year of service is done doesn't mean that your service is done. It doesn't mean that you don't have to volunteer and be a good citizen and do the things that you were put on the life for. Um, So I think that... I think a, one title at a time is an appropriate thing. Okay. And I can definitely recognize your side of everything. But I wanted to say my side of everything. I, I, and, you know, I was a waggle with this question a lot. One, on one side, I believe that the title holder should focus on that particular system because they are the ambassador for that brand, that system. And everyone should have other have an opportunity to go for different titles. So, I mean, it, it can look like it's not fair for one title holder to go from this system and have this system and this system. But on the other hand, I believe that if the system is not loyal to you and treats you like crap, then, yeah, go for the different national title. Go for those different national titles. But also, if you are in an open contract, then you have every right to participate in other national, international, and world pageant systems, and no one can really get mad at you. Now, here is where the question gets tricky. This is where a new question is proposed. Can title holders be phenomenal queens being multiple national, international, and world title holders? If yes, if they are extremely organized and driven, then, yes, they can hold multiple titles. But not everyone can do it effectively. So that's where that extra question comes in. Can you actually hold three different titles or two different titles, international, national, or world titles at the same time? So that question, I can go back and forth as me being a title holder and me being the director at the same time. So I can see both right. sides of the spectrum. But we actually have a few callers calling in, so let's chime some of them in. Excellent. 
Hello. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm good, and yourself? I am doing wonderful, and who are we speaking with today? Oh, I think we have lost them, so we will come back to them in a second. And we're going to keep going on with the rest of these questions. Okay, good. From Green Bay, Wisconsin, around your hometown. <laughs> yep, a couple hours away. <laughs> do you have a talent? If so, what is it? And do you like the Green Bay Packers football team, Milwaukee Bucks, basketball, and or Milwaukee Brewers, why or why not? That's a tricky question. (laughs) Yeah, it is. You know what? I do not have a talent, Um, and I'm glad there's no talent portion in the Mrs. United States competition because I would just do horribly. Um, Everybody would probably leave. (laughs) Um, um, As far as the Green Bay Packers, Bucks, and Brewers go, um, my favorite team I like them all I have to root for my home my home teams um I've been to Bucks games I've been to Brewers games and I've been to Green Bay games so I've experienced those things I have to say the Packers are my favorite I mean Aaron Rodgers come on how can you not love him um (laughs) but you know my my parents my parents reside in Green Bay and I've gotten the I was very blessed to be able to meet Gilbert Brown in person and a lot of the Packers are very welcoming to their fans. They'll stop and say hi. They're they're level with the fans. They're they're not above or be uh, you know below them at all. It, and it really is a home team that is owned by Wisconsin. And I love that about them that they're so approachable, even though they are professional football players. And they didn't really this year. They didn't really have a bad record they were 10 and 6 so that wasn't pretty bad this year yeah they did all right they did all right (laughs) (laughs) well that was a fun question I I liked that question just to see where you where you stand I know my dad's from Milwaukee Wisconsin so I love to hear asking questions like so what do you think about this team who do you like today do you like this team so I, I like to ask him uh who his favorite team is and everything like that so that's a really good fun question well, let's hope he still loves his Packers. Oh, he does. He loves Good. everything about Wisconsin. He's lived there all his life, so um, until um, my father and my mother got married, then he moved down south to the southern state. Well, it's still a good place to visit. <laughs> well, our next question comes from New Haven, Connecticut, and they've asked, what are your thoughts on children under the age of 12 wearing makeup during pageants? You know, that's a really good question, and I think that a parent needs to keep in mind what's right for their children. Um, Mm -hmm. My girls have never shown a desire or an interest to do pageants, I think, because we do so much volunteering in the community. Um, But if they chose to do pageants, I think that we would allow them to wear a little bit of makeup, and I think that's okay, Um, as long as they, they still look like themselves to a point. Exactly, and I'm going to piggyback off of what you've said. I think it's very acceptable for them to wear makeup for a pageant. I know that the Miss United States pageant has Little Miss and Pre-Teen United States pageant, and I was a national judge for that age division. And each one of those girls, yes, they had their makeup on, and they looked very pretty, but when I saw them around the hotel, I did see that they didn't have makeup on, and they still looked just as pretty. So I think that at a certain point, it's it's okay because their age division is 12 and under, 12 to eight, or 8 to 12 years old. But at the same point, they did not have, their parents didn't have makeup on them when they were just lounging around the hotel or going to go get something to eat. So I do think that the parents need to recognize what is good for their child and that there is a time and a place to wear makeup and then there's a time and a place to not wear makeup. So being around the house in makeup isn't, you know, really, I don't think it's, acceptable. I mean, if they want to play in it, okay, that's at home, you know, but take it off. But when they're in a pageant, in some pageants, when it's a natural type of pageant, they can wear a little bit of makeup. And then you do have, it's one of those questions like the other ones, I've wiggle waggled in it, I did the Miss American co pageant system, where uh, until you're a preteen, you're not allowed to wear any makeup, but that shows their natural beauty. So 
it kind of just depends on the system you're with, if they can have makeup or not, and then it also depends on what the parent wants for their children. If they don't want them to go into the makeup phase yet, they can do things like that where they do not allow them to have, you know, makeup yet. And I can understand where they're like, we don't want my child to grow up too fast. That is a very a very controversial question, but I think it's a wonderful one. So I, I love your side of everything. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Well, we have a few more callers, and we're going to talk to them. Hello. Okay, I think we're still bleeding some people, but that's okay because we've got a lot more questions to go. <laughs> But first, before we keep going into these emails that keep coming in, I would like to thank our sponsor, LuaRoe, by Kimmy Height. Every piece has its own story. So thank you. I know that she dressed me for New York Fashion Week, just going around, and I absolutely loved my little gold dress and my blue and gold dress that they had that she um, sponsored me. And so I loved all the outfits. So if you want to go get yours, go to LuaRoe by Kimmy Height. So Wonderful sponsor right there. In addition, I'd like to give another quintessential thank you to Double Hoops Exposure. More in-depth recruitment. You can visit them at www.doubleexposureho.wixsite.com slash doubleexposurehoops. Well, our next question comes from Boise, Idaho. They've asked, if you could change one thing about yourself, what would it be and why? Love that question. A perfect pattern question. <laughs> um, you know, I I truly think that each individual person is made the way they are. But if I had to pick one thing, I would probably go from thick straight hair to curly hair because it's kind of a pain to have to sit with a curling iron for an hour trying to curl my really straight long hair. <laughs> Yes, I, I understand the struggle. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's it's a good one. <laughs> but I do like that answer. That's a good one and very different. <laughs> so yesterday I got to speak to you on the phone, and I learned that you and your husband do drag racing, which I was so shocked about that. Go <laughs> do drag racing. You're remodeling cars, which you're doing one currently, which is a 1955 Safari Wagon. Your family is huge on outdoors, but also this is your fourth year competing for the Mrs. Wisconsin United States pageant. What are you doing differently this year to prepare for Mrs. Wisconsin other than the other three years that you've prepared? You know, I'm, I'm one hoping that fourth year is a charm, but unfortunately that's not up to me. Um, this year I think that what I'm doing is I'm kind of letting go. I'm – really staying focused on who I am as an individual. I'm really focusing on looking at all the things that I've done for my community, not only here in Wisconsin, but all the way to Africa. I'm really looking at how many people's lives I have touched and impacted. And just remembering that at the end of the day, that it's truly not the crown that defines me. It's me. Mm Mm-hmm. I acknowledge what you said. You said that the crown does not define you. It's you. I love that quote. You should make a shirt out of that. (laughs) But a very wise (laughs) friend told me that. Oh, wow. Well, that is a very true statement, what they told you, and I'm glad that you live by it, and I can tell that you live by it, but you are definitely ready for Mrs. Wisconsin, and I can't wait for to see you compete and hear about all the excitement, but you're definitely ready and to compete for the fourth time, and hopefully fourth time's a charm. I hope. <laughs> fingers crossed. We've got our fingers crossed. Thank you. Well, we have come to the end of our show, and thank you so much for joining the CTWB audience, listeners, and I on the show tonight, Ms. Michelle. Well, thank you very much for having me, Burgundy. I appreciate it. You're welcome, and good luck on your adventure to Mrs. Wisconsin and all your endeavors. We know you are going to do exceptional at the pageant and with your uh, husband and with your children. I'm just so excited to see 
a wonderful individual out in the world doing really good. Thank you. Well, you have a wonderful evening. You as well. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Remember, you can follow Michelle Wisehine at the following. On her Facebook page, it's M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E-W-E-I-S-H-E-I-M. That is her page, and you can follow how she is doing as your Miss Racine County. And that is R-A-C-I-N-E. If you want to get involved with the Mrs. United States pageant, please visit M-R-M-I-S-S, United States Pageant, dot com, or you can visit their Facebook page. I also like to give a shout out and a good luck to one of our MUI models, the Ms. Universe V International Model Incorporated Program, Michelle DeVena. She is representing, she's going to be going to the Ms. South Carolina United States in a month, so we wish her all the best as she takes her journey to Ms. South Carolina stage. If you want to become a guest on CTWB Radio Talk Show, please email us at clowntalkwithburgundy at gmail.com or contact us at via social media. Our social medias are Facebook, Crown Talk with Burgundy, and that is B-Y-R-G-U-N-D-Y, or my personal account, Burgundy Mallory. Or you can visit our Instagram, Crown Talk with Burgundy, our Twitter, Crown Talk with B-Y, or our YouTube, Crown Talk with B-Y-R-G-U-N-D-Y. Or you can just snap us if you want to and add us on Snapchat, Crown Talk with CY. We are now modeling and pageantry, so be on the lookout for many modeling opportunities. You never know when you may hear a designer on here and want to model for them at September's New York Fashion Week. I hope everyone has a wonderful evening, and until next time, I leave you with You're Never Too Young to Be a Role Model. Flame-seared, Greek-seasoned Euro meat. This is the kind of meat that only a legit Euro place would get. But maybe you don't think about Arby's as a Euro place. Well, Arby sells more Greek beef and turkey Euros than anyone else in the country. So, you know what? We're totally a Euro place. We're the Euro place! Two for six dollars. Arby's, we have the meat. At participating Arby's for a limited time.